Clement Armstrong, behind me you see my PC. Uh, I use that for my video and I don't really have time for gaming anymore, so I don't really use it for that. And I've got a problem. I'm not sure if it's the power supply or the motherboard because I keep upgrading the power supply to you know higher and higher levels. It's an AMD uh, chipset, it needs a lot of juice. I've got I think an 850 watt power supply, it really needs a kilowatt. So I'm not sure if that's the issue. However, this is the motherboard that's in it, or at least this is a second motherboard. Uh, if you recall one of my previous videos, this was a sort of a donor one where I grabbed some parts off here. It's got loads of stuff on it, which is nice. And um, I've recently been given its uh, lesser sibling. So that, that's an MSA 99X, and this is an MSA 97 Revision 2. You can see it does uh, suffer a little bit of fewer ports on the back, you know, in terms of SATA, if I compare them side by side, as it were. You can have a look there, see? Doesn't have as many USB 3 ports, it seems, on the back too, but that's fine for me. I just want reliability, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap these uh, in the machine. I was toying with the idea because of the MSA 99X has these heat pipes on the heat sink. You can see they've got a far better sort of heat uh, sink arrangement. If you look at those big blue aluminium blocks, you can see there's a heat pipe between them. You don't get that on the 97. However, it's not really a deal breaker. So what I think I'll do, because it's an open uh, case, I can relatively easily get in there and uh, swap these out. And to really, then I could just crank the performance back up to full and just see if the machine browns out or not. If you haven't uh, seen this machine, I'll just zoom in here a little bit. You can get, you can get a better idea of what's inside it. It's basically got two um, graphics cards that are in a Crossfire configuration. They're an AMD. It's running uh, an octa-core AMD processor, which is just down here. Uh, and there's these big heat pipes that go to the radiator at the back because it is water cooled. It's got 32 gigabytes of RAM and uh, a whole bunch of uh, SATAs and things like that which are used for my um, disk arrays here which is where I store my video. So one of the benefits of this case, and uh, I can't remember, this is the Aero Cool. I can't remember exactly even the name of the manufacturer, I'll put it down below, um, is that you can just grab it, grab it and get in there nice and easily. And one of the really cool features is underneath you can actually get to the screws that mount the heatsink for the CPU. So even if you have to do a CPU fan uh, swap um, and it uses a different footprint, you can get in there without taking the motherboard out. So that's really awesome. So really without further ado, all I'm going to do is just pull out all of the cards and then just swap in that new motherboard and really just crank it back up. Um, looking at the forums, they do say that that uh, motherboard, the uh, 95, um, or is it 90, yeah, no, sorry, 97, that doesn't uh, support SLI or some other of these configurations, but frankly, I don't care. For my video editing work, as long as I can see the picture on all the screens and I can offload the rendering onto the GPU, that's fine. I don't think I've actually got any benefit of having it in an SLI configuration for video editing anyway. Um, whether or not I need those extra ports, uh, I'll have a look around the back, but I can always get a USB 3 hub, so it's not. I don't think it'll be a problem. Okay, I've got all the bits and bobs out. Just one top tip for you. Uh, what, what I tend to do is I dangle all the wires and cables in obvious places so that I know to put them all back. Um, but before you remove any of these more complicated multi-part connectors, which have loads of little uh, jumper type uh, connections on there. Get your second motherboard up next to it, then you can just swap them over directly. Because sometimes there's an orientation issue on these if they're LED, but you know, it's got the hard disk LED, power switch, reswitch switch, all those little fiddly ones that sometimes come in a block, sometimes don't. If they don't come in a block, say side by side, just swap them over one at a time. Okay, the moment of truth, it's all assembled. I've all put it back together. I didn't really come across any uh, problems. But I thought I'd share turning it on with you because normally this is when all hell will break loose. Can't get it working. Apparently this motherboard may or may not like my CPU. So I've got to go find another PC because apparently you can put the firmware of the motherboard onto a pen drive and there's a button on the board that says flash uh, by or something like that. So you shove this in, apparently you hit that button, it'll update the BIOS. So there's a possibility if I do that, it'll identify the CPU and I can get on with it. Because frankly, this was a job that was supposed to take just 10 minutes.
As you can see, the PC's working now. It took how many motherboards, Jared? Uh, well, technically it only took one, but we did go through three motherboards because one didn't have the right port. And if you don't it. believe me, there's one motherboard. And there's the other whole load of them. So that's what happens when you get your uh, parts from a nefarious vendor of yeah. uh, second-hand parts. Yeah. But uh, I'm glad to say it's working now. And if you have the urge of doing your motherboard, please allow yourself at least half a day in case something screws up. Oh yeah, and do it on a Saturday morning so you've got a chance of getting a spare part. Well, technically I'd say do it on a Friday if you evening so you've got a chance of getting a spare part. There you go. Yeah. Good advice. Please feel free to leave a comment down below and click subscribe. And as ever, thanks for watching. Bye.